Dear brothers and sisters, that's how James, our Lord's brother, addressed a letter to the people of his church who had scattered from Jerusalem a number of years earlier, fleeing from famine and persecution, and they were now dispersed across the known world. A couple of months ago, Karen and I felt led to use the book of James as a source of inspiration and instruction for our church in 2020, as we face our own trials caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, and as we persevere through suffering and separation. Right at the outset of his letter, James shares his purpose in writing it. He wanted to encourage Christians to persevere through trials and separation in the hope that their endurance would grow, that they would develop strong character and spiritual maturity, that they would be strong enough to be ready for anything. James calls God's people to wholehearted devotion to the way of Jesus and emphasises again and again that our faith in Christ must lead to action in our relationship with others. Dear brothers and sisters, he wrote 10 times throughout his letter. But it's in these last few paragraphs that we will look at today that James uses this phrase four times as he writes about the suffering they are currently enduring. You can sense the love and compassion that James has for his dispersed congregation. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope you sense that same love and compassion that we will feel for you as we are scattered across our homes during these COVID restrictions. I hope you'll be encouraged by these verses today and by the testimony of friends who will share how they rely on prayer when life gets tough. Above all, brothers and sisters, may we continue to be encouraged by God himself during this time of trial and separation. We're going to start Church at Home today by singing an old hymn which says, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Will you join me in seeing these words today and putting them into action every day? This morning's Bible reading is from James chapter 5, verses 7 to 20. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn spring rains. 
You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. <clears throat> the judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we can have blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Jacob's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no, otherwise you will be condemned. If is anyone among you in trouble, let them pray. Is anybody happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. May the Lord give us understanding to his word this morning. Hi. Who likes basketball? Basketball is a big thing in my house. Nathan started playing basketball when he was only seven and has been playing in multiple teams per week ever since. Nathan loved watching the NBA players and seeing how high they could jump and how they could reach and touch that net and the ring to put the ball in. He dreamed of being able to do exactly the same thing. Now, you might remember Nathan was particularly short, um, so he's a bit too short to jump up, but that didn't let it didn't stop him. He persevered. He practiced and practiced and played lots of games and trying so hard week after week. He had some highs, like winning the Country Vic Championships and being named um, Most Valuable Player, which was pretty exciting. But there were also lows of losing games and breaking an arm or two while we um, played. But he persevered year after year after year. It took nearly 10 years, but Nathan can finally jump up as high as those NBA players and touch that ring. And just like Nathan persevered in basketball, God wants us to persevere in prayer. It says in James chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, the prophets put up with anything and went through everything, and they never once quit. We count as blessed those who persevered. What have you persevered through? Nathan persevered through for years to be able to jump high and to reach that ring. It also says in the Bible that Job persevered. He prayed and prayed and God answered his prayers and provided for him. We also need to persevere in prayer. Also says in verse 17, the prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful. God answers prayer. There's no doubt about that. But we need to persevere, to endure, to continue, to pray even when things are hard, like they are for a lot of people at the moment. We need to be like the prophets who never once quit, all the time honouring God. God bless you this week. May you persevere in prayer.
grateful to you for being part of this conversation so that you can share about what prayer is for you and how it makes a difference in your life. So to begin with, I'm going to ask you, how long would you say that prayer has been an integral part of who you are? Since I was a kid, it's always been something that, like, you know, I'm always told it's important, you know, you've got to pray and read your Bible all the time and that those are the important things. Um, it was probably back when I was in Hawaii, so 2018, and there was one book we read, Too Busy Not to Pray, which yeah. is really good. Mm. And he just talks about having, it's just like a small journal. I've only got one that's like that big. Um, so I just have two pages each side. Uh, one half is just a reflection on the day beforehand. And then the other page is just a prayer. And I learned the Acts prayer, which is uh, adoration, so praise, confession, confession, thanksgiving and supplication, so asking God for things. I still keep it to this day, which is, what, mm. two and a half years later? Well, I didn't become a Christian till I was about 17 or 18. And so before that time, I certainly didn't know much about prayer. It's kind of been like fits and starts most of my Christian life. Mm. Always prayed, but it hasn't always gone well, if you know what I mean. Yes. So there have been times when I've been really concentrated with prayer. There's been times when I've been slack. There's been times when I've been learning something new and doing it in a different way. Um, so it hasn't been consistent. Prayer has always been uppermost in my mind, but it hasn't always been consistent. I think for me, um, grew up with with, with prayer um, as, as a kid with, with mum and dad and, and teaching me about prayer and, and what to do and then sort of something that I probably didn't really do for myself until my faith started to grow. When this sort of conversation started with God, um, it's like, wow, he really, he really does listen and, and that's really helped me with my, my prayer life to, to know that God's really interested in my, my little stuff and my big stuff. For me, I think when I was very young, I, I don't think, even though I have been in a, I, I was born a Christian, but um, I don't think there was too much importance placed on prayer in our family. I think circumstances were such that we didn't attend church very often. Uh, and when we did, when we did start attending regularly, I think it was one of those, it was an Anglican church. So it was one of those prayer book uh, kind of services. Mm -hmm. So everyone sort of prays the same prayers at the same time. So I don't think that I was really praying on my own very much. Um, until much later and uh, even then it was not consistent and um, honestly I think it's been only in the last maybe six years maybe actually since I came to Australia that uh, prayer has turned into something more like a conversation with God I can actually talk and share and um, yeah and I've become closer to God in that way My, my favourites, Philippians 4, verse 6, don't worry about anything but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mine is the same, Philippians 4, verse 6, don't worry about anything but pray about everything. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I'm going to go with a different answer. Just Jesus, he always found time to take himself away from the from the crowds and from his disciples to spend time alone um, with God. And I think if it's important enough for Jesus to do that, that's something that that I need to uh, mm. have in my life too. Well, life's pretty difficult and unsettling for most people at the moment. So how does prayer help you to get through tough times? I was listening to a sermon recently that I, I think was really interesting and put it in a cool way. Uh, when Jesus is on the cross, he quotes Psalm 22. Uh, a lot of people know it, the first verse of Psalm 22, where it starts with, um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, and it ends with, uh, he has done it which they say can also be translated, it is finished. Mm -hmm. So this pastor said if, if Jesus, while he's on the cross going through torture and death, uh, can get by through meditating on the scriptures and praying, then so can you. Mm -hmm. 
And when there's tough times, I'm I'm literally praying nonstop. <laughs> I'm sharing everything and every emotion and every moment. I'm I'm just clinging on to him. That that's how prayer gets me through. Yeah. And I think knowing that, you know, God knows knows me intimately. And he he knows my mind and he knows my heart and he always has the right answers. You know, I just have to trust in him. It's those times where you're not in control of things, that there's nothing that you can do or say will will change anything. It's, it's out of your hands. And it's just so nice knowing that I don't need to do it by myself, that mm. I have God with me through everything. When have you had to wait and to persevere in prayer? I think for me it was uh, back when I was a tradesman and I, and I wrecked my neck and been a good two years in um, a fair bit of pain that just was continually just breaking me down and I kept on praying, you know, oh, when am I going to see the other side to this? When am I going to get better? And he answered it in a completely different way than what, what, I, what I was kind of expecting, expecting to get better. He uh, had a different plan for me and, my, you know, my plan certainly wasn't to be a youth worker, but here I am now on a completely different path. I look back at it now and, and you know, God was with me every step of the way and, and just paving a different path for me. There's a lot of people who I pray for who are not Christians and, in a sense, me praying for them all the time is being persistent in prayer. I know that God hears me and even though I don't have the answers that I want straight away, but I know that he hears me. And his answer may not be exactly as I planned it. I mean, he's an all-wise God, all-knowing, and I trust him completely. Uh, I, I think I'm probably in one of those stages now, um, having to persevere in prayer. Uh, at the moment, I work for the Bureau of Meteorology. I write computer programs. And I don't mind the work. I've been there a bit over a year. But it's definitely not where I want to be long term. And I definitely believe that God's got something more actively ministry related for me, mm. uh, for me and Ash. But what that is, I don't know yet. But, but it really has been a, a period of waiting um, for man, probably the last two or three years now. So there's a bit of frustration and impatience and excitement but also trying to get the most out of where I am now and trying to be the best I can as a Christian in the mm. settings I'm in now as well. So from your experience what is the hardest thing about prayer and what's the best thing about prayer? The hardest thing about prayer is when I when I sort of go off and, ha and have a Right, I'm going to go off and pray and have some silent prayer. My my mind wanders. I used to get really down on myself that I'm just the worst prayer. Then I changed to what is, I suppose, the best thing about prayer is I, I really actually changed my mindset about what prayer is and prayer is conversation. I seem to be pretty good at talking, so I'm like, why is this prayer thing a uh, <laughs> thing? I'm, I'm just going to chat to God. I, I really feel like God's in my thoughts and that's something that... Um, I suppose it makes it really real. I'm in a relationship with God and I just want to talk to him and he wants to, he'll talk back to me as well. I think I, I had similar to Jimmy that my mind just wandered, which is why I, I like writing my prayers out. Like I said, at the start, especially in the morning as part of my, my morning routine, writing them out just really helps me focus. Apart from that, I think the hardest thing is consistency. Uh, I think I'm pretty consistent now, but at the start, it was hard to find something to do, which made me want to do it every day, uh, made me know what to do every day when I went to pray. Uh, so it was a challenge to find consistency, but it's weird, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Something that I, I originally had to force myself to do is the thing that probably makes me happier and more peaceful than anything else I do in the day. The biggest problem for me, the hardest thing, is that I'm constantly getting distracted. It's just amazing the amount of distractions that come up. You know, the phone will ring, uh, someone will call me, someone will knock at the door, the cat will come. She always comes when I'm trying to pray. You know, I have to be really strong and say no, you know, no to the distractions. I just know that he listens to me, he loves me, he doesn't judge me. 
Um, he wants the best for my life and I feel free. I feel free to bring him the good, the bad and the ugly and know that no matter what, he loves me. For me, I think the, the hardest thing is, well, basically the same as the distractions and perseverance and persistence. And uh, so like, like Jimmy, I've, I've taken to making it, making prayer more like a conversation with God and, and, and I, I'm, I'm talking with him through the day. And so it, that becomes the best thing because um, literally I'm talking to my best friend who is always with me. So, yeah, that, that's why prayer is the best thing. If you were talking to a, a friend who either has never prayed or has been struggling with some of the things that, you know, we all struggle with, as we said, the distractions, the, the mind wandering, what would be your advice for them? Keep it simple and get to the point. Yeah, keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And tell God what you really need and, and remember mm-hmm. to thank him. The first thing that came to mind for me was I remember reading in a book by C.S. Lewis, he was talking about how hard it is for people to love their enemies. And he said, just do it. Uh, act like you love them even if you don't feel it and eventually you'll find that you actually can't help but love them in the process. And I think it's a similar principle here. If you don't know how to pray, you don't know what to pray about or what to say, just try. Keep trying. And if you keep trying, I'm confident that eventually you'll find that you actually enjoy it and you're actually capable of doing it.
Last words are important, aren't they? Whether it's a loved one or somebody famous that we know, we're often keen to know what their last words were because they give us a window into who that person was and what was important to them. And after several weeks of travelling through the book of James, we're up to his last words today. And it's really interesting to see what they are. In James chapter 5, he tells us that we need to have patience in suffering and perseverance in prayer. I reckon James could have written this yesterday. When we think about the situation in the world in which we're living at the moment and how much patience we've had to have in the past six months, um, it's amazing, isn't it, how God's word is always alive and relevant to us. But James is not just looking past the pandemic and asking us to be patient till that's over. James says, Dear brothers and sisters, there's that beautiful greeting of love to us. Be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. James wants to point us to the end game, that day when Jesus will come again and we will be able to rejoice knowing that all the sin and the grief and the, the pain will be, will be done. Um, John Lennon is credited with saying everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And we know it's not the end, isn't it? So we need to keep being patient and persevering in the sufferings that, suffering that we're experiencing right now. So James, as ever, is practical with this, with this um, instruction. He says, you know, be like farmers who have to be patient for the rains to fall and for their crops to ripen. He points us to the prophets and in particular Job. Now, if ever anybody knew about patience, it was Job, a man who was deprived of his livelihood, his possessions, his property, his family, his friends, his health. Everything was stripped away from Job and he was a broken man. And yet he could still say, I know that my Redeemer lives and that he will stand on the earth. And so we're encouraged to think to that day when Jesus is going to come again and to have hope in that. James tells us that Job, after all his long, long suffering, was actually given back twice all that had been taken away from him because of the Lord's tenderness and his mercy. Are you suffering? Pray. Are you rejoicing? Pray. Are you unwell? Pray. And then James says right at the end, the last couple of verses are dedicated to those of us who are wandering away from the Lord. He says this, my dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that their sins will be forgiven and they will be saved from death. Maybe you're one of those people who is wandering a bit at the moment. This has been a hard season and maybe you're not sure whether God really is all powerful anymore. Maybe you're fearful. Maybe you're just distracted by other things. Maybe the way you speak and the way you act and the decisions you're making are wandering away from what God wants from you. Well, we're going to pray for you because we want you to return to God and we want you to find that salvation and the forgiveness of sins. And we encourage you to pray as well and ask the Lord to reach out to you and to bring you back. This is a really hard time, but this book that we've been studying gives us so much practical advice to help us in our hardships. And I think none more than these last words from James, who tells us to patiently and persistently pray to our powerful God. He will make a way for us. One day, Jesus is returning for us. 
So let's keep praying and asking him to make a way for us. This day, Melbourne Day 2020, when we remember the beginning of the first European settlement here in 1835, we, the people of God, come together in prayer to seek you for your hope, healing and reconciliation to flood into the lives of the residents of Melbourne and Victoria. Restore the brokenhearted and pour out your grace that brings comfort and breakthrough. My name is Pastor Esme Bamblett, I'm an Aboriginal pastor. And I want to tell you today that I believe God is calling the church, his church, to unity. We are all one in the body of Christ and we have a common enemy and we need to be together, be united and we need to pray. Lord, we pray for every church community that seeks to be a continuing witness to your unchanging love and compassion. May each know the leading of your spirit, inspire faith amidst discouragement, and continue to shine the light of Christ more brightly than ever. Heavenly Father, we're praying today for our police, for our Chief Commissioner, for all of our emergency services providers. We're asking that you would be with them as they go about their business, as they serve our community. We're asking, Lord, for hope and healing to be extended to them and to their families as they serve to protect us. And we're asking that today in Jesus' name. Bless against this pandemic and restore our economy. Bless us with the peace of God to keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless us with good courage and strength and place our hope in you. Help us, Lord, to show grace where there is panic, to build faith where there is fear, to bring comfort where there is anxiety, to bring light where there is darkness. We want to be the hands of Jesus and touch our world with your love. I declare over you in Victoria the glory of God's splendor is our strength. His marvelous favor strengthens us. His wrap-around presence is our protection. 
Psalms 89, 17, 18. God bless. Father, we pray that you will turn bad to good, that you will awaken in our city during this time a great spiritual hunger for you, Jesus. In the midst of the pandemic, we thank God for the leadership of Premier Daniel Andrews and his government, for all those who work to support our community, our first responders, indeed every person who is serving in some way at the front line to make a difference as they care for people. Father God, we ask for your blessing upon them. We ask for your healing of our people, indeed of our land. Father, will you pour your Holy Spirit out upon our nation? Oh, do that for your glory, we pray. Father, we pray for Victoria. We ask you that you would come and move and bring peace and joy and love to people in need. We thank you for this great city. We thank you for this great state. And Lord, we ask for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our communities and our leaders, for a spirit of compassion and courage that we might keep heart being communities that hold together in caring for each other, never content to let anyone live in need of the basics of life. As children of God's family, we have the opportunity and the privilege of praying to our Heavenly Father. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your greatness and we are thankful that your word tells us that you love and care for each one of us. We thank you for your plan for mankind, for Jesus, for his life, his death and resurrection and that through him, we can have forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. We thank you for your creation and all that we have to use and enjoy. We pray for Karen and Clint as our officers, that your Holy Spirit will continue to give them wisdom and guidance for the challenges of each day. We pray for those planning for the future of the Salvation Army, for those working in social service areas, and we especially pray for those who are missionaries and Christians in other lands. In this time of COVID-19, we pray for those people who are working in medical areas, that they will be protected, and we give thanks for their commitment to caring, and that those working for a vaccine will be given wisdom. For those who are currently unwell, are concerned with medical needs, or those who've lost loved ones, we pray for them at this time. We pray for the older members of our church where they may be finding isolation brings loneliness and extra challenges. For families who are homeschooling children and concerned about ongoing work and family commitments. We pray for our young people who are managing uni and other studies online and where they also have work, the differing requirements there. To be the people you would have us be, we pray for understanding and patience, that we will consciously be caring, kind and inclusive to others who are having difficulties in coping with so many changes in their lives. In the midst of all this, we are reminded in your word that you will be with us in all situations and we give thanks and praise that you are faithful in all your promises. We continue to trust in your word and your love for each one of us. And through, in and through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hi everyone, it's my privilege to bring a benediction for you today and I couldn't really think of a better one 
than the words that God gave to Moses to give to Aaron for the children of Israel. And that is found in Numbers 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. God bless.